Good day everyone! Today let's talk about scientific attitudes. Learning competency. The learner should be able to recognize and show scientific attitudes. Objectives. Define scientific attitude. Enumerate and explain the different scientific attitudes. Describe the values, attitudes, and traits of scientists. Let us unlock first scientific attitude. What is scientific attitude? Scientific attitude is the desire to know and understand things that are governed by facts. It can also be a feeling or a pattern of thought. Let us now study the different scientific attitudes. Look at the image. The frog is curious what the other frog is wearing. The frog might be thinking, what's that? Why do you have that? Why I don't have that? So curiosity is a strong desire to know or learn something. Other example, why is COVID-19 Delta variant more contagious than the other variants? So curiosity asks the questions, why? Another scientific attitude is critical mindedness. It may be viewed as the ability to judge the merit or quality of something, looks for consistency, and challenges the validity of statements. For example, a student records and analyzes the data obtained in his experiment. Another example, a boy repeats conducting an experiment about the effects of sunlight on the growth of plants this time adding the experimental and control groups so that's critical mindedness now can you give me other example of critical mindedness another scientific attitude is intellectual honesty it reports all evidences and acknowledges the work of others for example your class is conducting an experiment and you are asked to record the growth of your plant every day. During the reporting of results in front of your classmates, you observed that only your group obtained a zero centimeter growth of your plant for the first three days. Will you change the result of your data? If you do, you are not honest. If you report, report it to a zero centimeter growth, then you are intellectually honest. As Mark Twain said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. That's true. Another scientific attitude is objectivity. Considers advantages and disadvantages and all of the evidences available. Does not follow his feelings and biases to influence his recording of observations, interpretation of data, and formulation of conclusions. For instance, before deciding on your class poll, on what platform of engagement do you want, synchronous or asynchronous? You tabulated the pros and cons of synchronous and asynchronous learning. Engagement. You found out that asynchronous has more advantages. Hence, you voted for asynchronous engagement. That is objectivity. Another scientific attitude is open-mindedness. A scientist listens to and respects the ideas of others. He accepts criticism and changes his mind if reliable evidence contradicts his beliefs. For example, your teacher asks you to design an experiment about a dishwashing liquid. You suggested calamine C as a dishwashing liquid, but majority of your group mates suggested that lemon is better than calamine C. In the end, you agree to use lemon. That is open-mindedness. According to George Bernard Shaw, those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And that is true. Another scientific attitude is perseverance. A scientist perseveres in his or her work until he or she is sure of the results. 
This attitude enables a scientist to continue with a project despite obstacles and failures. For instance, you want to find out if 20 push-ups every day is correlated to weight. So before doing the push-up, you recorded your weight before and after doing the push-ups for a period of one month. So you do the push-up every day for 30 days. Even if there is a storm or granular lockdown in your area, you still do the push-up. You keep on going. That is perseverance. Another scientific attitude is skepticism. Look at the picture. What does his facial expression imply? Is it yes? Is it no? Or maybe? What's your answer? Right. It implies maybe, meaning he is in doubt. So skepticism in its simplest meaning is in doubt or uncertain or not sure. So skepticism is the act of suspending judgment, the opposite of jumping to conclusions, when evaluating an explanation or claims. So it allows scientists to consider all possibilities and systematically question all information in the course of an investigation. So this attitude of uncertainty is good because it allows you to question things. Activity time. Let's analyze. Number one is write true if the statement is correct and false if it is false. Okay, and then change the underlined word to make the statement correct. Number one. A scientist is believed to demonstrate skepticism when he questions the veracity of a statement in relation to the evidence presented. Number two, a scientist is curious when he, he, she shows interest and pays attention to objects or events. Three, a scientist is being objective if he does not follow his feelings and biases to influence his regarding of observations, interpretations of data, and formulation of conclusions. Four, a scientist is said to be open-minded when he listens to and respects the ideas of others. Five, critical mindedness is manifested when a scientist often reaches a dead end in research and must go back and determine if all the assumptions made are true to how the world operates. Let's analyze part two. So you have to read the situation and identify the demonstrated scientific attitudes by the scientist. Number one. Galileo Galilei invented many mechanical devices other than the pump, such as the hydrostatic balance. But perhaps his most famous invention was the telescope. This instrument allowed him to observe the moon and the stars. In his long observation of the stars, he made several discoveries. One of these is that some stars wander through the sky while others remain fixed. So what scientific attitude is demonstrated? Number two, Joseph Henry, an American mathematician and scientist, knew from his experience in constructing electromagnets that electricity creates magnetism. He hypothesized that magnetism can cause the flow of electrons along a conductor. However, he did not make a conclusion until he had conducted many experiments that proved his hypothesis. What scientific attitude is demonstrated by Henry? Number three, Benjamin Franklin was interested about the nature of lightning. His experiments on flying a kite during a thunderstorm and collecting ambient electrical charge in a later jar enabling him to demonstrate the connection between lightning and electricity. Franklin became interested in electricity in the mid-1740s, a time when much was still unknown 
on the topic and spent almost a decade conducting electrical experiments. He coined several terms used today, including battery, conductor, and electrician. He also invented the lightning rod used to protect buildings and ships. What scientific attitude is demonstrated by Franklin? Number four, a new poultry racer tries out different feeds to improve the quality and the number of eggs laid by his chickens. After a week of feeding his chicken with feed A, he found out that egg production increased. The eggs laid had a yolk characterized by a darker color. Finding the results satisfactory, he concentrates on using feed A for the poultry. In a chance meeting with an experienced poultry racer, he learns that feed A also shortens the lifespan of the chickens to about half. Still, he continues using feed A. So what scientific attitude is demonstrated by this scenario? Number five, scuba diving to some depths of seawater has not daunted Dr. Porfirio M. Alinho in his study of coral reefs as habitats for fishes. As a marine biologist, Dr. Alinho has spent years studying silty and polluted coral reefs. He investigated how this condition affects reef fishes. From his wealth of experience with coral reefs, he formulated a model of the reef fish community structure and interactions in Bolinao, Pangasinan. Surely, such studies entail hard and long hours of work. In recognition of his work, the Department of Science and Technology, GOST, named him one of the outstanding young scientists in 1993. So what scientific attitude is demonstrated by Dr. Alinho? Okay, for the let's try part or simply the quiz or evaluation. So write only the letter of the correct answer. Number one, which describes intellectual honesty? A, attending to the smallest detail of one's experiment. B, carefully reading all reports on experiments related to one's experiment. C, consulting with other scientists. D, faithfully reporting the results of one's study. Number two, what scientific attitude is necessary to get a person to start a scientific study and keep his interest in it? A, critical mindedness, B, curiosity, C, open mindedness, or D, willingness to suspend judgment. Number three, which describes critical mindedness? A. Checking and rechecking a scientific study. B. Finding fault in the work of other scientists. C. Recording observations and reporting them truthfully. D. Accepting other people's point of view. Number four. Lavoy Schur, in his experiment on burning or rapid oxidation, referred to the work of Priestley most of the time. Which of the following traits of a scientist is shown by Lavoisure? A. Patience, B. Accepting authority, C. Open-mindedness, D. Curiosity. Number five, in telegraphy, a current is interrupted in the pattern known as Morse code. Bell hoped to convey several messages simultaneously, each at different pitches. However, he could not see a way to make and break the current at the precise pitch requested. How could pitch be converged along a wire? He wondered. What scientific attitude is demonstrated by Bell? A. Cur objectivity, B. Curiosity, C. Skepticism, D. Critical mindedness. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. And for more information about the scientific attitudes, you may refer to these references. Have a good day.